everyone, it's Ethnic Green Living here and welcome back to week three of the book club where we are discussing the book Uninvited by Lisa Turquoise. For those of you who are new to my channel, thank you guys so much for coming over to check out this video. It means a lot to me. I have a big, big variety of things that I cover on my channel, so check the playlist and you can see everything that I offer from foods to homeschooling, etc. But the reason I bring that up is because there is something um, under playlist called books. And so if you're new to this channel um, or to this series, you can go back and see the previous two weeks. Some of you have let me know that you don't have the book yet and I completely understand that and I have tried to arrange this in a way that um, if, even if you don't have the book, you still can kind of follow along and get a lot of good um, golden nuggets and really just be blessed. I want to share two um, comments that I received. One was from Instagram and one was from YouTube. On YouTube, um, Beth Ann said, I was struck by what doesn't feel good in my flesh won't make sense in the flesh and put it into the light of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have to keep my mind focused on what the Holy Spirit whispers and not what my flesh screams. I struggle with letting God be God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is really good. I think we all struggle with letting God be God. Um, and this comes from um, last week. The reflection was um, God is good. God is good to me. God is good at being God. And um, that was a really good chapter, chapter two. So if you're just joining, go ahead and check out that. From Instagram, um, FTWA. Y N E 66 said, we must tie our identities to our unchanging God and unquestionably loving God. This really touched me because I have tied my identity to who teachers, family, total strangers, and the devil said I was, and not always the one who is faithful and true. My word for this year is focused, being single-minded on my purpose, and not losing focus by distractions or on good things that don't align with what God is calling me to do. And I really think this is a good, I love what she said because so many times we can get um, off track by good things. It's not that we're trying to go doing something so bad and so left side or right field. It's a good thing, um, but all good things are not God things. And so we really have to be careful that we guard our time and that we learn to say, no, thank you. We can't do everything and I, again, as a mom of five, have learned that I have to say no sometimes. I can't do everything. As much as I want to do everything and get everything done, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So this week we're talking about chapter three, or you guys are going to read chapter three. I'm just giving you tidbits as you're reading through chapter three. There's a lady at the gym who hates me. Um, <laughs> and Lisa talks about this um, beautiful lady who's you know very athletic and how she thought the lady hated her and then one day the lady smiles at her and Lisa's like oh like she doesn't hate me um, from that point on um, you know things were differently but she pointed out that to say there can be true rejection and perceived rejection how many times do we assign thoughts to others they never for even actually thought we hold them accountable to harsh judgments that they never made. And we own rejections that they never even gave us. Wow. I may be the only one. <laughs> but I can relate to both the true and perceived rejection. There was once um, this lady and I just knew she hated me. And come to find out the lady told someone else that she admired me. But to me, she gave me the vibe and she came off as she didn't like me. <laughs> so I can totally, again, relate to that true and perceived rejection, can you? Um, the next thing that I love is just living loved. Live love. Um, live from the abundant place that you are loved and you won't find yourself begging others for scraps of love. And I think this is so good because how many times do we find ourselves I'm begging for love from others. How many times do we go looking for love in all the wrong places? How many times do we have the wrong friends? You know, the wrong everything. We know it's not good for us. We know that those situations may not be the healthiest. And, you know, we may know those people don't mean us good. But we're not living from an abundant place of love. And so we're fine with accepting the scraps. 
Um, so let us not settle for scraps. Let us all realize and figure out how to live loved and get to that place of living love. Because it is a process. You don't just wake up and say, I'm living love today. And so she'll talk more about that. You'll get into that this week as you read the book. Um, another nugget that I loved was Jesus doesn't participate in the rat race. He is into the slower rhythms of life, like abiding, delighting, dwelling. Words that require us to trust him with our place and our pace. We live in a give it to me, give it to me, microwave, quick society. It's not fast enough. It's not good enough. It's not right. And like an instantaneous gratification. Everything just needs to be so rapid and so fast. But if you notice that throughout the Bible, it always talks about slow. It, things happen when things are slow. Um, and the Bible really talks about that abiding and delighting and dwelling. And who, he who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Just so many scriptures throughout He's trying to tell us to slow down and focus on what's more important. Okay? He awaits for us every day with every answer that we need. Every comfort that we crave. Every affection that we are desperate for. While we look everywhere else but him. Wow. He's there. And we're so busy that often we miss him. So the questions for this week is can we slow down and hear what he has to say? One. Two, are we living love? And if not, how can we begin to live love? Like, what steps can we take? Three, do you hold others to harsh judgments that they never even made? Are you holding on to unforgiveness? Because of a perceived rejection? And lastly, what are you personally running around to achieve? that God wants you to slow down to receive. I want you to reflect this week. Living love is sourced in your quiet daily surrender to the one that made you. And I want you to reflect what things you are trying to achieve. And I want you to reflect what things do you think that God wants you to receive. Lastly, I have very, very small assignments this week. And this is for the novice and those people who are just kind of starting out. And you're thinking, how do I um, daily surrender? How do I abide? You know, how do I delight? How do I slow down? And what I want to challenge you to do is to aim for two minutes of daily surrender, two minutes of prayer, or two minutes of reflection, or, or two minutes of meditation, whatever you want to call it, but just slowing down for two minutes out of your day. You have 24 hours, and I want you for two minutes a day this week, till I meet back with you here on next Monday, to slow down and surrender, and to see that there's something that God wants you to receive. The second assignment goes with the first. It's just slowing down to abide, delight, and dwell this week. It's to be present fully. Often we are too busy on the next activity we have to do, the next um, assignment that's due, that bill we have to pay, that meal we have to fix. I have to wash those dishes and wash those clothes and get this baby dressed. Oh, by the way, I didn't get that assignment done. This is due, that's due. We're so far ahead that we're missing the present, the now. 
we're too busy on what we want in the future that we're missing nursing our children and we you know actually realizing it's a blessing to be able to prepare a meal for your family or to have a family to prepare anything for because some people don't have a family it's a blessing to be able to be a wife um, it's a blessing to be able to be a sister in Christ so I just want you guys to focus on enjoying the now and the present and not being so busy that you are missing it kind of that Mary Martha spirit um, it's not that you can't clean it it doesn't have a place it does but know what's the better thing and what's the more important thing at the time because this is a gift that's why it's called a present and so we don't want to miss out on it right who wants to miss out on presents <laughs> but it's a present so we want to enjoy it and want to treasure it um, and I think that's why it's called present because it's a treasure it's something that's a gift it's something that's beautiful and it's something that's meant to be enjoyed so I want to just say thank you again for taking the time to watch and to come by I want to ask you this week to live loved and until next week, blessings.